What is up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of AI News, where I round up and summarize the most significant events in AI to help keep you informed. If you like this channel and want to stay apprised of the goings-on in AI, press the like, subscribe, and notification buttons below. As always, there will be chapter markers on this video, so please feel free to skip ahead to a certain segment if you'd like. Today, we're going to talk about how AI stole its first job, how AI can benefit from sleep, AI-assisted medical diagnoses, OpenAI's latest model, and finally, the risks of security vulnerabilities from AI-generated code. So let's go ahead and get started. In our first story, we explore a grassroots protest against AI-generated art. Throughout 2022, we've seen a dramatic increase in the popularity of AI image generators. In order to generate this art, AI must be trained on thousands of images by real-world artists to learn a variety of aesthetics. For example, if you type, create a picture of a cat in the style of Picasso into OpenAI's Dolly, you get this. So it might not come as a surprise, then, that some artists view this as copying of intellectual property, or even worse, theft. So when AI-generated art went from fringe tech toy to winning a fine arts competition at the Colorado State Fair, artists took notice. And so in early December, when AI art made its way onto the community platform ArtStation, artist backlash quickly ensued. Now it's worth noting that ArtStation describes itself as, quote, a community that was shaped with the goal of empowering artists and creating opportunities for success. It's the place for artists to connect with each other and showcase their artwork with others. In response, ArtStation quickly changed their platform policy, adding a no AI tag for artists to specify that they will explicitly disallow the use of their images in AI systems. Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic Games, the parent company of ArtStation, was sympathetic to the plight of the artists, as well as copyright concerns, but also went on the record saying that, quote, he did not want Epic Games to become a company that stifled innovation. So what this story boils down to is one of the first real-world examples of AI displacing activities that humans partake in to earn their livelihood. What artists fear is that for the first time, a computer could potentially do their work more quickly and easily, all without charging a commission. A prospect that might be particularly appealing for organizations whose main priority is profit maximization. And job loss aside, what of the ethics of training AI? Will we only use art generators that are trained with artist consent? What happens if someone makes a pirate bay of AI that eschews consent? How might Disney, for example, react to such a system? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Our second story asks us to think on the similarities between human and artificial minds. A recent study from the University of California, San Diego, explored learning in AI systems and found an interesting similarity to how the human brain learns. In humans, sleep builds rational memory, the ability to remember arbitrary or indirect associations between objects, people, or events, and protects against forgetting old memories. In recent years, Artificial neural networks that have been modeled after the human brain have developed to improve a wide range of technologies and systems in our lives, a common example being the use of neural nets to spot credit card fraud. In many ways, these neural networks have achieved superhuman performance, such as computational speed, but they fail in one key aspect. When artificial neural networks learn sequentially, new information overwrites previous information, a phenomenon known as catastrophic forgetting. If your goal is to train a neural net on how to spot credit card fraud that may evolve over time, catastrophic forgetting presents an Achilles heel for this technology. Contrastingly, the human brain learns very well sequentially, combining new information with old, and specifically benefits from periods of sleep for memory consolidation. Now, per the recent study, it appears that taking another page from the book of biological models may help to mitigate the threat of catastrophic forgetting in artificial neural networks. The study group found that when artificial neural networks were trained on a new task, but with occasional shutoff periods that mimicked sleep, catastrophic forgetting was mitigated. Like the human brain, the study authors say, sleep for the networks allowed them to replay old memories without explicitly using old training data. While we're still in the early innings of artificial neural networks as a technology, it is hoped that developments in the space that allow us to simulate human learning might give scientists a better understanding of how to improve our own memories particularly in brains that have seen age or dementia-related decline. Continuing on in the science corner for our third story, we have a compelling case for OpenAI's GPT-3 as a diagnostic tool for human health. In this particular case, for the detection of Alzheimer's from a recent study from Drexel University. In addition to being able to formulate intelligent responses to nuanced queries, 
it appears that OpenAI's GPT-3 is also useful at identifying clues from speech-to-text inputs that are 80% accurate in predicting the early stages of dementia. Part of what makes this possible is that GPT-3 is particularly good at zero data learning, meaning it can respond to questions that would normally require external knowledge that has not been provided. For example, asking the program to write cliff notes of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet would normally require an explanation that this means a summary, but GPT-3 has gone through enough training to understand the reference and adapt itself to produce the expected response. According to Felix Agbavor, a doctoral researcher at Drexel University and the lead author of this paper, GPT-3's systemic approach to language analysis and production makes it a promising candidate for identifying subtle speech characteristics that may predict the onset of dementia. To test this theory, the researchers train GPT-3 with what researchers call an embedding, a characteristic profile of how Alzheimer's appears in speech, thereby turning it into an Alzheimer's screening machine. They then ask the program to review dozens of transcripts from a national health dataset to identify whether or not each was produced by someone who is developing Alzheimer's. The researchers found that the results, quote, demonstrated that the text embedding generated by GPT-3 can be reliably used to not only detect individuals with Alzheimer's disease from healthy controls, but also infer the subject's cognitive test score, both solely based on speech data. To build on these promising results, researchers are planning to develop a web application that could be used for either community-based testing at home or in a doctor's office as a pre-screening tool in the near future. For our fourth story this week, we have yet another milestone for OpenAI. The company that brought you ChatGPT and Dolly has done it again this time with a text-to-3D model generator. Last week, OpenAI open-sourced what they're calling Point E, a machine learning system that generates point clouds to represent a 3D shape. If you've ever done a connect-the-dots style picture, point clouds are effectively just three-dimensional connect-the-dots. Now, in the past, generating non-two-dimensional images for AI has been hugely challenging, especially in the amount of time, measured in hours or even days, and computation that it takes to reliably generate these images. What OpenAI did here was to actually combine two different AI models, text-to-image and image-to-3D, to enable this connect-the-dots-esque system to create objects in three dimensions. To achieve this end product, OpenAI trained AI models on several million 3D objects and their associated metadata. The results are a system that is much faster than prior text-to-3D models, and that could one day open the door to a new way for us to render objects, structures, or designs that we want to bring into the real world via 3D printing or other types of manufacturing. An open question here is yet again one of creative and intellectual rights. Similar to our ArtStation story earlier, there are large online marketplaces for 3D modeling, like CG Studio and Creative Market, that allow artists to sell the content they've created. If AI-generated models make it onto these platforms, or is trained on artist data without their explicit consent, we could see similar pushback. For our fifth and final story, we turn to the limits and potential pitfalls of entrusting AI with too much responsibility in the workplace. A recent study from a team of researchers affiliated with Stanford University found that software engineers who use code-generating AI systems are more likely to introduce security vulnerabilities into the apps that they build. According to Neil Perry, a PhD candidate at Stanford and lead author of the study, code-generating systems are currently not a replacement for human developers, and developers using them to complete tasks outside of their own areas of expertise should be concerned, and those using them to speed up tasks that they're already skilled at should carefully double check the outputs and the context that they are used in in the overall project. This comes as we've seen ChatGPT go viral in the recent weeks, with many lauding its ability to turn simple text prompts into code snippets in a variety of languages. And as we've seen many major corporations adopt tools like GitHub's Copilot to enhance their developer velocity. The issue with these code outputs, however, is that they're still very rudimentary. If you're not careful and entrust them to do too much of your work, they may well cause more harm than good in the long run. The Stanford study looks specifically at Codex, an AI code generating system developed by OpenAI and that underpins GitHub's Copilot. Codex was trained on billions of lines of public code to suggest additional lines of code and or the functionality of existing code based on context. It's worth noting that systems that are trained around private, 
in-house source code may see better results, as these systems would likely generate outputs that are more in line with a given organization's coding and security practices. This news should not be taken as an outright condemnation of AI-assisted coding, more so than it should be as a cautionary tale for developers not to entrust too much responsibility to these systems. Undoubtedly, these tools will improve over time, but for now, cognizance of their limitations is warranted. Alrighty, that's everything for this week. Thanks for watching.